uh, in our locality in Bradford and he was from amongst the first people to come here with his team, the autos team, the boys. Mm -hmm. A shout out to them as well. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, he's been ever since. His name is Hassan uh, Ilahi to be precise, uh, but we call him Sasu, Sasu, Sas. And you can join the two in the 2002 World Cup. I was 12 years old, he was 11 years old, and Turkey were doing so well, they got to the semi finals, I think. Yeah. And we coined him with Hassan Sas because he was a very good footballer back then. And uh, so was our very own Hassan. And Alhamdulillah, he stuck with him, and I don't think I've ever called him anything otherwise <laughs> no, no. ever since. Why? Because it just some names just stick with you. So, Alhamdulillah, he's here in the in the studio. He's here with me. Mashallah, he's going to be on many many more podcasts, co-hosting. We also have in the background uh, just a, a big shout out to the soldier that is Was uh, Wasim Ahmed, soldier Was as he's known. Uh, a previous host and guest and uh, part of the furniture of the Let's Talk With I'm a podcast. So he's, he's here uh, watching eagerly over us uh, as the director of the podcast. He's moved to hire. He's, we've promoted him. <laughs> yeah. He just said cut that. But no, we're going to go. We're carrying on. We're cracking on. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, we've got a few things we're going to discuss. First of all, Hassan, uh, thanks for joining me. Thank no you for worries. accepting. It's no so worries. good to have you here, my guy. No worries. Um, You've obviously, I think you were one of the few, not the few, but the many who used to tune into the podcast. We did. And uh, today you're here yeah. live on set with me. So yeah. I think we should start with that of where you've been for the past 18 well, where months. Where have I been? Oh, yeah. Good, good question. 18 oh. months is a, a long time, yet yeah, a very short time in today's day and age. Um, I think our last podcast was with uh, Didi and Akkad. And these guys on the quarterfinals of the Euro Championships, yeah, it was. 2022. Yeah. And um, we didn't come back since then. Uh, Italy ended up winning that. Uh, it was elated, obviously. Uh, and then after that, we just, uh, I don't know, I just took an extended sabbatical. I can't even remember why I didn't come back. Uh, what happened, I just got busy with so many other things uh, in the background, just cracking on with work here at Al Hikam, uh, with the Faith Cave and other stuff which we'll, we'll come on to. So we, we just hadn't, I just didn't do it. I don't know. I just felt like taking a break from it. Yeah, to be fair. Not that I was doing Joe Rogan style <laughs> podcasts anyway, where I had hundreds on here, uh, or hundreds of podcasts coming out a week. No, uh, it just, it was one of those. To be fair, we'll vouch for you because I think within the last 18 months, we've seen what you do behind the scenes a lot of people don't actually get to see in your yeah, day-to-day yeah. life uh, yeah we've, we, we obviously i think yeah uh, from 2015 to probably this last two years you know you we, we was always seeing ramadan and other stuff obviously like if your cousin rob uh yeah timmy got married yeah yeah shout timmy out as well so <laughs> Timmy finally got married, <laughs> but Timmy, Timmy got married and then, but obviously that's been in the last two years Yeah. And, and obviously Rob's been what, five years now, six years? 2019 I think it was. Yeah, yeah so five years um, and and pr so in that time we were, we were meeting etc. But then came the, the you know, we, we got very close again yeah. through uh, football Yeah. and you then get to see a lot of what happens and what keeps me busy and preoccupied along with taking on other responsibilities yeah. um not mentioning no names <laughs> uh, but we will come to that yeah him. Uh, we'll come to we'll him, come to him yeah. specifically <laughs> um and the other him might be thinking we're talking about him but it's not him yes it's the other him <laughs> yeah and then that him we'll discuss <laughs> yeah. uh him later <laughs> but uh, nevertheless we've um, we've just been busy with that so um yeah, so uh, how's things with you, Hassan? You tell me what's happening, what's latest. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Busy, busy. Uh, I think, like you said, we last two years we've become more seeing each other on a day-to-day -day rather than, you know, in Ramadan when we used to come to Ravi or Juma. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, work, work life. How um, is the work life? Back in Bradford now, so we were, oh, away, yeah. we were away for a few years. Uh, went to Scotland. 
working there. Then. How was how was that? Just tell us what it was about because there's all sorts of um, I won't say there's all sorts of uh, views yeah. of how good life was uh, during the the Glasgow days. You've lived away from home um, for a very long time. For yeah. a long time, so although people see us, you know, or they're out there chilling, we were working, you know, doing twelve-hour shifts. And at the beginning, it was tough. Obviously, I had uh, Faki with us, uh, so he makes it in house entertainment. <laughs> yes, um, but I think you know, being away from family, you miss a lot. Did you, did you do in Glasgow? I was there for about four years. Did wow. about three, three and a half years in Glasgow. Then I did about six months in Edinburgh. Then obviously Rob got ill. Yeah, uh, cancer, and uh, then came back contract came to an end, and he was ill. So them last couple of months got to spend a lot of time with him. Okay. Um, then got married, then that's it. Then uh, it was no more. Traveling, <laughs> Let's traveling. not even get to no more traveling. Life, anyway. <laughs> li- well, you travel with your wife now. Yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, Allah has blessed you with a beautiful baby. daughter. Yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. You she know, keeps and, it on our and everything yeah. now you do is for your family. Definitely, which is how it should be it when should you get married. It yeah. should be about the family. Yeah. You know, it should be about spending time with your wife, spending time with your kids and children and. And I think it's important that we um, we, we emphasize that to you know our, our friends, our people, because people get caught up with dunya, they get caught up with life, they get caught up with many many things, and and I just think when when they do get caught up in this manner, it, it leads to or well, sometimes we, I mean, we don't forget family, yeah, but they sometimes become secondary or third priority. I think you in the caught, list. like you said, you get caught up in the dunya. Um, yeah and that does obviously then you just need to remind it as well because it is important you know to obviously as a wife at the end of the day you've got a kid you give them time as as well and you know there's always a balance and everything so yeah so that that's the you know post marriage you know everything changes away from being out so you can't chill anymore and not till you know how we used to um obviously um, to be honest i beg to differ alhamdulillah oh, okay alhamdulillah my wife's you know she's much understandable you know of everyone i'm out and she's understandable but she's relaxed, you have to justify it man another <laughs> she might be watching, watching. <laughs> she might be watching uh, well, no. yeah yeah we obviously we we alhamdulillah we spend a lot of time together uh, you know especially in these last couple of years we spent a lot of time together and and uh, you know we'll come to it. W- what you're wearing? Why are you wearing this? What is it about? Yeah. This badge and logo that you have so closely um, to your heart. Yeah. So I think that's where our studies come back into us being close as well. But we'll come on to that. But yeah, just a quick overview. Obviously, Route One Rovers. Um, we started it in 2013, and it was just you know all the local lads. Me, Usi has. Um, I'm uh, Sami, obviously. The originals. Yeah, so th- we were the close ones, and everyone was playing different football. We were, someone was playing, um, you know, Fairbank, Usila, Wara, Bradford All Stars, Haz was playing at Bradford All Stars. Everyone was all over the place. And then Sami was obviously Sami, the main man. He's the main man. I'm oh, that's the him we were referring that's to. That's the yeah. him. He's the main man. Uh, so that started in 2013, where he actually sat us all down and said, Look, let's all. You know, like a powerhouse. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and you know, at that time, you know what? It was different than to what I see football now. Um, obviously, turning up on a Saturdays, you know, is different to what football is now in the sense. But it was two different things. Like, obviously, the, all the boys playing together. You know, we started off then, and you know, slowly, yeah. slowly moved on. Then, obviously, people went away, and moved on. Um, I went to Scotland, a few of the lads, most of the lads, you know, started working away and then yep. obviously the younger uh, generation came in and, you know, Sami stayed and looked after it and big shout out to him, obviously, for the commitment that he put in whilst we were away. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then I think it was maybe after that I got married and then I was back in Bradford and <coughs> come back and then, you know, sat with Sami and he said, look, semi-pro potentially is a real shout out. And at the time, you know, you don't think, you think semi-pro when you hear these teams, Takli, Eccleville, Campion, when we were younger. Albion, yeah, when Campion we were, was the big one yeah, in our area, Albion. And this local area where and we are. Even yeah. I say it all the time, when we were younger, we used to hear these teams, you used to think, wow, you know, these are some big clubs, you know, within us. And Alhamdulillah, you know, last year it was a massive push to get semi-pro. Uh, 
I don't think a lot of people understand the amount of work and hours, man hour, manpower it took to, you know, get everything across. Do you have a dream? Yeah. And, you know, like we did, we did it for the South Asian community. Um, obviously, with the chances, if you look up and down the National League football, there's not, I, d- I don't think, I think there might have been Peterborough. I don't know if they were fully... Yeah, there's one... Uh, is it Peterborough? Uh, Khalsa. Khalsa, yeah. yeah. Sporting Khalsa Sporting in Birmingham Khalsa, in Aston, yeah, I think it. they are. Yeah. They, they, the, the founders of that club or the directors yeah. are of South Asian background. Yeah. Uh, but then a lot of their players now yeah. are very multicultural. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas in our perspective, I think it was a case of the core of... The, the, the directors or the, the, the backroom staff or the management, the head of the whole operations, yeah. all South Asian. Yeah. Uh, and majority, if not most of the team, yeah. is South Asian based, yeah. Yeah. ethnicity wise. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, British born, all of them. Yeah. Uh, and then in that, we have uh, people from other backgrounds and ethnicities which have joined. Yeah. Uh, and, and big shout out to them as well. Yeah. You know, it's we're not. not a. A, a club that's just focused on one ethnicity. Yeah, uh, we we've we've kept it very open to everyone. Open arms, like uh, we said at the beginning. If you're good enough to play, you know, no matter what color, skin, religion, of course, race, of course, you're gonna get a fair chance. And yeah. we've seen it. Um, this season proves it. Yeah. So yeah, but the, the, I think the values and the ethos, the ethos of the club is to give our own an opportunity and chance. That should be the first and foremost objective, which. Which is why I came on board. Yeah. Which is why I, uh, I think that's when I forced was approached. Forced your hand. And I think you was the probably the biggest reason for forcing my hand because of our friendship and yeah. just because you're a really nice guy and that. <laughs> uh, and 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 I thought, okay, why not? And obviously, we've grown up. Football's been a big part of, you know, the culture of our youth or just culturally we've it's been a big part of us yeah wherever we are whatever we've done we've just always related back to football in many aspects during our childhood in the playground when we used to grab our burgers and go out (laughs) and play against each other yeah Uh, and then whether it's playing at the local clubs that we grew playing with fairbank united and others yeah Uh, obviously i went away for a while and then when i came back i you know whatever i stopped first i just said yeah to it yeah and, and thanks to Shaz in that sense, but um, I think we all came through the Fairbanks system yeah, in yeah. one way or another. The uh, the contributions have been massive, massive in, in massive. our grassroots football, massive, huge. Yeah. You know, Shaz and Aki have done great work in that aspect. Yeah. But then, obviously, because I was always in and out talks, and the dean and propagating the dean and spreading the dean has always been the first priority. Definitely. Um, so I says wherever we were, if I had possibly crossed yourselves or others at that time yeah i do look back sometimes i think if i did i might have it might have been so different yeah definitely. it's written I, it was it was it meant to be the way it, it was, was but then eventually the calling came yeah and uh, you know the, the huge opportunity of um a huge opportunity of being able to do what uh, a huge opportunity for us to be able to achieve what we, we what we set out to achieve and when you told me your plans and i always thought what's going to be good for our community because that's the way i think yeah. what can we do yeah. to improve and better our community i think that's one of the related. first things that you mentioned as well i says look i just want to see us go semi-pro yeah and create opportunity for our own people yeah more than anyone first and foremost yeah. and you know the, we, we dreamed we worked hard and it became a reality it did and when we got told that we were going semi-pro, uh, you know, we had to pull a lot of people in for that dream to come true. And a massive, massive shout out to Razak from Chatachai. Yep. He was a huge support, has been a huge support. Massive, massive shout out to Shaq Specialist, yep. Shaquille Shah, who probably will be a, a guest on the year soon. Yep. He was huge Definitely. and instrumental in it. I think at that time he was the... Key, key, yeah. At that point, and 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 he he believed he believed he in us the he season did. before we went, yeah. And he continued in this 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 current season. Yeah. Big shout out to Yasser as well. UC three charity. They they've supported immensely, yeah. and the good work that they're doing in their community in Halifax and around uh, the surrounding areas and, and around the world as well. Going out to 
Palestine. Yeah, Palestine, of, yeah. where the people, which will come to as yeah, well. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, Rudy's throughout the years, Rudy's been there with us. He's backed us from day one. From day dot, he's yeah. always helped uh, Sameh yeah. uh, and, and the club yeah. uh, and supported us. And then, you know, we've had uh, others now come through as well. Milo Hawes, Asga, massive shout out to the Milo Hawes team. Yeah. You know, they've Hospital. they've saved us a lot of money, man. Honestly, for the Saturdays. For a we, Saturday club. What we were doing for them first five, six weeks. We've saved a lot of money, man. Yeah, and and yeah. that's, you know, thanks to Asga and, and Milo Hawes for providing the refreshments and the food for the halftime hospitality that we have to it's mandated yeah. by the league, the Northwest counties that we've got to do. So yeah. massive, massive shout out to them and and all our other sponsors and Penny supporters, Penny, Penny Appeal, Appeal. Yeah. they pulled through big time, Adeem and Ifti. Ifti Car did a great job in that as well. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think, we're not missing anyone out. <laughs> no, there's others as well. Yeah. Hashim uh, designs, designs now, yeah. you know, says we needed boards for the around the pitch and everything. Yeah. He says, look, done what could have cost us potentially 140 pound a board. He's, he's done less than half that. Yeah. And, and you know, I had to pull Sami right uh, wrong again. Yeah. That don't worry, you're getting a good deal. Yeah. Because obviously he's... <laughs> yes. you know, of course, when no. somebody's an owner of anything, yeah. you have to watch where every penny and every pound is spent. And, and you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't knock Sammy for that. He has to be careful in that. And so we're on a good journey. And, and where are we at the moment then? So right now, uh, to be fair, like you're going back to when we first approached you and you said the first dream is it achievable to go semi-pro. And yeah. we did, we got there. Uh, and I still remember conversations where people said to me and Sami and you, you know, it really, it's going to be tough for you. Yeah, it's not going to happen. And, and, you know, that level is too. But there we believed in our team. Like, you know, mashallah, we'll come on to the boys, you know, what they've achieved. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we've got done much better than we expected. To be honest, when we first entered and we said, right, what's the first thing you target? Avoid relegation. Yeah. We need to be competitive, be in there. You know what? And secure our status in yeah, that division. Yeah, top ten maybe. But yeah. now, Alhamdulillah, nine games to go. We're in playoff. And yeah. It's a very tight division, and you know, nine games to go, nine cup finals. If we get to step five, madness. To do it in the first year, madness. You know, Shock waves in the whole yeah national yeah, league, mate. Yeah. Shock waves. And I think we have because. You know, at half times when we were entertainment of uh, entertaining mm-hmm. chairmen and you know talking, and they speak highly of us of yeah. what we've achieved when they look at oh, it's your first year in this league. You they look at our team, our ethos, and they do believe in it. You know, they they look at what we've got or how yeah. we're different to other. Uh, but it is a community club at the end of the day. Of course, it is. Uh, of course, and it then is. we put that at the forefront. Obviously, we play at Mali. Yeah. Uh, just before I carry on subscribe and obviously share the podcast is we're live right now um we hope that the sounds coming through good the uh, visuals are good as well and just just subscribe and share please as much as you can uh, and let's get more people watching and joining in this is going to be a fortnightly podcast every monday every second monday at 8 p.m or around half past 8 p.m will be a lot more prompt with timing moving forward um but please please share Get the word out. We've got around 50 people watching live right now. We need more people to tune in and watch the podcast. There'll be loads of clips that'll be cropped out from here uh, and, and stuff like that. And and coming back, I mean, obviously we're based at Mali, which yeah. is just off the Keithley Bypass yeah. before you get into Keithley. Yeah. It's a small town uh, uh, just just outside of oh, in Bradford, uh, one That's of the outskirt towns. I think next year's plans will keep it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've got plans. There's big plans. There's yeah. big, big plans. Um, I hope I hope we get playoffs. I hope we win in the playoffs and get to step five. Um, and obviously, we've we've built a very 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 good structure and base for this team uh, to progress and move forward. And a big and key part of that is uh, just a plethora of players that we have at our disposal. I'm talking some of the baddest footballers. And we grew up in the time when they were. You know, Murphy, Usi, Haas, Fess. Lagarde. Fess was... Fess, yeah, Fess. Top, top footballers. And then if you, if you go back further, when we were 15, 16, Penny, Imi, Big Z, Weedy, Dakula. Dakula. These Imi, guys were... Ishii, yeah, Nasser yeah. Lot. 
Amaz right Jay-Z. at the start, yeah. Asif, yeah. all these little played yeah. at semi pro levels. Yeah. yeah, they're going back to Heaton days. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then some Manning, big players. Yeah. yeah. Manningham, Heaton, yeah. some of Bishop Rovers, all these old school clubs. Yeah, they were top. That players. laid the foundations for grassroots football for Asians. Yeah. And you I know? think even at that time, not obviously going on to these crop of players, but they yeah. never got that chance to test themselves at semi pro. Opportunities, yeah. But now obviously Alhamdulillah we've given this group and they do deserve it and yeah. I think like we were we talk uh, you know uh, throughout the week about football and the achievement that they don't I don't think they still acknowledge it I was saying it to Zak Khan and Moashad the other day yeah. I was like they don't know what they've done yet yeah, they don't it's not hit them that yeah. you know I think sometimes they see it as yeah we're going for a kick about on a yeah but it's and easy for them it is they, and I don't think they've seen struggle in football <laughs> maybe those who've gone through academies who may have seen like Zak yeah. I think the rest of them, like, because... Moashad's a street footballer. He's a... He's a, he's a street They're footballer. bad footballers. Yeah, yeah. Bro, they're my boys. I chill with them on... Yeah. yeah. You know, every other night. Yeah. I'm going to probably go eat with them after this anyway. You know, and, and forget everything, bro. You just tell me last yesterday, Bradford, Bobby, <laughs> Sunday League, we are in the County Cup final. <laughs> Do you understand? We are the first all-Muslim team in our first... Entry into the Sunday League County Cup and we're in the final in our first run. We beat our arch nemesis Olympic. that is Olympic, Mujer's team, the Olympic. team that the Bayern Munich of Sunday League, yeah. the, yeah. The, and, the, and the, the Real Madrid of Sunday League. They are the Real Madrid of Sunday He Sunday is the Florentino he is Perez. Florentino, yes. Right? But in got, every way, shape, and form. But he met our GM <laughs> and she. And then he came across. <laughs> GM. These two, uh, I won't describe. <laughs> One's obviously lost a lot of weight. He's Masha, one definitely yes. I need to Masha. get. She, I get my I boy Sheba in. I saw him right at the. Because obviously he helps out on Saturdays. Uh, yeah, Rafa yeah. and Route 1 were very close. Yeah, yeah. Where they need help, will help. And, uh, well, understand. the core players of Route 1 yeah, they're, they're, are the core players yeah, of Bradford yeah, Moore. Yeah. And, and we've got a reserve team. Yeah. And most of those players play for the second team. Yeah. Or our y- Yorkshire Amateur League team, mm. which GM's the manager of. And then he's also Shout a you. co-manager as well on the Sundays with Bradford Moor. Last year they won the Premier Division, uh, the Championship Division, yeah. quite easily, comfortably. They were too good for that level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're now in the big league, which is the proper strong league. This is the league in Sunday League. Some good teams like Westwood and Olympic and Thackley and and, and Manningham and all these guys. Just go back to yesterday's game. Well, yesterday <laughs> was. Had it all. I don't know, you've watched a lot of football, grassroots, I have. What did you think? Honestly, uh, that Genuinely, game, be honest. I don't think I've seen a better game than that. It had everything. Four penalties. Yeah. A red who, card. Who was the referee? John, John Moss. Moss. John Moss. We met John Moss you yesterday. Couldn't, you, couldn't, you couldn't write the script, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. It's the semi-final of the County Cup. <laughs> John Moss is turned It's up. on a Sunday. <laughs> We've booked a 4G <laughs> pitch. Right? It didn't go ahead. She was fuming, but no problem. The boys are fired up. We're in the changing rooms. Wet, right? wet and windy conditions. Wet, windy, horrible pitch. Yeah. You know, I went to celebrate. I didn't lace my boots up, bro. One of them got stuck. Then the other one got stuck in the mud like quicksand. Right. GM's blend I don't know where he got them from. Buddy New Road or somewhere, right? Yeah. It's not here so we can say what we want. But nevertheless, watching. GM's blend Siagas, mate. He, I, I don't tell you what. I think one of his socks came off. As Let well. me tell you, he laces them up. <laughs> yeah. They need to breathe and he knows what I mean, right? <laughs> they need to breathe. Bro, that mood took him off one time. He did, he did. He was that happy. You know what? My These boys, GM, Sheba, Brafa Moore, Mo Ashad, Zach Ashad, you know. Hare. Hare. Oh, oh. What are you? You know, all the lads on that pitch. Yeah. Kesse. What a player. But to be fair, you know, Elegant footballer. Yeah, he, and I'm telling you now, as vice president <laughs> and chairman of the club that we are part of, <laughs> Route 1 Rovers, I don't know why we are not bringing that guy on. There were talks. but You have to bring the kids too good, man. He is, he is. He's just a bad, 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 bad footballer, man. He Honestly. Did, he, did. he is another street footballer up there. He is. His chemistry with Mo Ashad and Mohamed Ashad and obviously Zak Khan is next level. Zak Khan, just clutch. Mohamed Ashad, Bus- Clutch, Musa Jalo, cl- yeah, they were on it, man. The boy, every one of them. What a penalty save. Can you see? Yeah. 92nd minute, Mohamed Ashad just cool. 
I, I don't There's think a you, storm, man. Uh, but, just, woman, just, just. No, but I don't think there's. Ballerina, man, my boy's dancing on that pitch. He's obviously. I've we've had him at under 23s when him and uh, Nani came across. Obviously, Zach Khan. Nani got, played yeah, as well, yeah. you know. Oh man, Zach Khan, obviously for me, I've seen strikers. What, this He's the best footballer in Bradford. What the Anyone watching yeah. outside of Bradford will watch afterwards. That's it. I'm telling you now. At 20, that, what's at the name? He's at 22 years old. I remember the name. At the level he's doing it, you can't say you no. Know, I can't, you know, praise him enough, and you know, I don't think often he gets. The he's praise. got 27 goals already yeah, in yeah, this yeah. first yeah. full semi-professional season. Yeah, and you know, again, it's too good. When champions come, they go. How much? <laughs> How much is he on? How much are you giving him to keep him there? But, you know, his loyalty, what he's shown us. Yeah. And we'll never stop players from... We've had talks again and... Inshallah... But this guy, it's players. not about that. No, no. You know, he you know, deserves... We can't go into too much detail, but... Yeah. You know, Zach Khan has been loyal to this club. Yeah. And to be honest with you, he deserves the biggest appreciation because without his goals, where would we be? No, no. Straight definitely. up. And that's, you know, he broke the records in the amateur leagues. Yeah. The Yorkshire Amateur League in Supreme Division. Yeah. He broke the records in Sunday League. He's breaking. He's gonna probably inshallah break the record in semi pro, bro. Inshallah. And inshallah, you know what? And you know, he, inshallah, one day I'm that thirty-four year old soon to be that plays with the guy <laughs> on the weekly, whether it's Thursday or Wednesday game, six seven aside, mate, or whether it's the odd occasion on a Sunday, yeah. It's just a joy to play, man. Yeah, he brings the best out of anyone who's around him. No, I think that bunch of Mohammed Ashad, Zach Ashad. Top top footballers, man. Yeah, definitely. And they deserve everything. They're in the peaks. They, they, I think they yet to hit the peak. If they can keep their heads, they can keep their, you know, level of maturity. They can keep their fitness levels to where they are. The world is their oyster, my brother. Yeah, and uh, yeah. and we're blessed that they play for yeah, Rugby Rovers Football Club. Hundred percent. And Bradford Moor. May the third, Friday, May the third is the final County Cup final. Inshallah. We play Chapel Town. And inshallah is going to be massive. Is that West Riding, is it? West Riding uh, pitch in Leeds, yeah. yeah. So that's going to be massive. I think. So yeah, I think even uh, the players that have come as well, you know, Anis Yunus, you play with him on a uh, Wednesday. Oh yeah, yeah. Anis, well. Anis will come on there, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, Anis, he's helped us massively as well. Uh, Wakas Azam. Wakas. And then the players that have been there from day dot. Jono. Like Jono. Jonathan Mwembe, mate. He's fought in Congo. He's uh, ready for the African Cup of Nations. Nations League, yeah. Jonathan Mwembe you know? played yesterday. <laughs> mate, Musa got him sent off. I know. Can you believe he got, it? He got it dived. He got it dived. He did dive. Jonathan Mwembe. It's that big arm of yours. You pushed him. <laughs> I think at one point, uh, Jonathan had more arse. He grabbed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go away. You don't even know. Where are you going? On that corner drill. But you know, players like Jonathan as well, he's been with us somewhere from the beginning. And yeah. he's at chances to go you learn we've seen him you know younger and yeah a big out big shout out to him Zakashad you know they've been there I remember Zakashad you know I got him and Dan Hussein to play the first game for Root One back in when 2014 and you know they've been with us ever since yeah so yeah the the players that have been there so shout out to all the team if you forgot anyone yeah you know, do apologize the, the club you know uh, inshallah going forward. but lots happening with route one a lot's happening with bradford moore yeah uh, we're going places we're in big finals and you know it's it's celebrating our asian success the successes of our asian teams <coughs> at this level and it's a pleasure to be part of them definitely. and involved definitely with them with that regards moving on Obviously, um, in the last 18 months, there's been a lot of people who have passed away. A lot has been happening. Um, very recently, a very, very, very close friend of mine, uh, Majid Ashik, he uh, sadly passed away. Uh, very, very close to me. Very good brother, very good friend. Uh, they own the restaurant in Pudsi called East uh, that do the best Sunday roasts. Um, Everyone in Bradford goes there from all different backgrounds. Uh, and, you know, it's just it's just unbelievable. Honestly, it's unbelievable. And uh, how he passed away, the, the sudden nature of it, the amount of people that turned out, you know, I can't even drop certain names, just everyone from Liverpool to Manchester that you can imagine, all the big heads, they were there, they paid their respects to him. 
all of Bradford, the BD3s, the BD5s, all the brethren from those ends, areas, they all turned up to his janazah. He was such a loved character, such a nice guy, on a level, down to earth. So funny, man. So funny. With me, he was he was a great laugh. And and he was so close to us in our circle and that. And we just make dua Allah, give him Jannatul Firdaus. Amin. This last week, you know, a very close brother of ours, Rahat, who, who owns the Shimlas, uh, you know, his wife sadly passed away as well. Uh, and so did his uh, child. You know, it's tough, man. They went through, he's going through such a difficult time. And I pray that Allah Almighty give him khair and barakat. Allah Ameen. Almighty make it easy for him as well. Ameen. At the same time, um, my first ever boss, man, uh, Aji Muhammad Siddiq, he was somebody who, um, when I graduated from Jamil Karam in 2009, and I was, uh, I was, uh, in, you know, instructed and told that, you know, we've, there's a, a huge position to be an imam of a masjid, and and we want to send you. And my parents discussed it with the Qibla Pizasa, my teacher, and it was, you know, said that right, you've got to go. Was it Baki? This was Baki Masjid. Yeah, he was the chairman of the masjid uh, back then, 2009. Uh, and three years I served there as an imam, and he was my boss. He was my first ever boss, and. You know, Alhamdulillah, he taught me so much, uh, spent so much time there, you know, big shout out to Ash and Arshad and the, and the team there at the time, who I worked with so closely uh, for the betterment of our community there. Uh, and Haji Saab was 94 years old when he passed away. Um, and, and there's been many others that have, have passed away in this in this last year or so, and, and we make dua for them. And, mm. and, and, and how can we sit here and not talk about What's happening in Palestine? I mean, it's just, it's so sad to witness and, and see what's happening. The injustice, the oppression, uh, you know. Genocide. It, it openly, it's, it's a genocide. Yeah, you know, yeah. you can't do carpet bombing of, you know, 2.2 million people that live in the Gaza Strip, of which 30,000 are confirmed as dead or killed. And then more, so many have been displaced, so many have been injured, you know, millions have been displaced, over 55% of them are on the verge of hunger and poverty, you know, building structures have been destroyed to the core, and the, the, the occupiers are completely trying to eradicate Gaza from the map, and, and the thought process of the Zionist is, is simple. As the occupier of that land, who come and they've, they've, they've occupied this land, they took over this land, they colonized this land, and said, right, we're going to take you out, we're going to kick you out, and the way it's done, you know, and it's not now, it's been happening for the last seventy-six years since nineteen forty-seven, and before that, and we just need to study our history. We need to learn about the history of Palestine, what's happening, why it's happening, what is the greater objective of the Zionist movement within the Middle East why they are trying to create so much instability, insecurity in the Middle East and, and how many other countries are involved in this and all of this that is happening out there we just have to wake up and, and realise what is our priority yes, you know, we sit here, we talk about football we talk about everything that's happening in our lives but we can't forget, we can't sit here and just ignore what's happening in Palestine all the people that are being persecuted, all the people that are going through the hardships and difficulties, you know, the people that are that have suffered in every way, shape, and form out there. It's uh, it's just it's just so sad, man. It's so, it's just so sad, um, and and you know, today Imam Adil went. He's gone to Palestine. He's took a group of uh, forty-five people. Raz, he's took a group of fifty-one people. Uh, you know, they, they're going to Palestine and... You've been uh, several times. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been about 17 times. Okay. 17 times and I, I'm going in, in Ramadan. I'll yeah. be taking a group in Ramadan. If people are interested in joining us, they can do so. In Ramadan, I will be taking a group to Palestine. Um, and, and, and certainly it's something that we need to... I think... Now more than ever. Now more than ever, go and visit them. 
people have been scared they have you know fear tactics of oh it's not safe there don't go there you can't go there you, you know it's no you know Raz has gone he took a group of 15 last month they got in through Jordan it was safe sound uh, they managed to visit the masjid pray in the masjid do the ziyarat and he's come back and now group upon groups are going so you know have some courage be brave uh, there's there's nothing to worry about honestly wallahi you're going to the masjid to pray that's all you are going to do you're going to visit the third holiest masjid in islam the second masjid to build to have been built on this earth and the first qibla of the muslims so join me join me on march the 18th till the 25th where i will be or 24th where i will be leading a group with raz kfs uh, to palestine families are welcome uh, brothers and sisters etc are more than welcome to join us uh, in in respect to this so that's that's obviously palestine uh, regularly visited regular being there uh, taken part in 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 the prayers there in 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 just visiting there i love it i love palestine my sheikhs from there and 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 so on and so forth um you've been uh, this year as well you went canada and south africa oh yeah yeah so in the last 18 months i've actually visited south africa uh actually not this year specifically but in this last last year, year yeah, yeah. yeah. you were saying uh, i've never canada. been in south africa myself but you the way you described it beautiful uh, i think it's country. one of the best countries in the world the scenery the people the food very organic very natural a lot of sun and it's just beautiful beautiful yeah. yes there's crime but where, where, where is, is there, there crime? Yeah, yeah um some countries have more law and order than others uh, south africa is just unbelievable i love south africa i've been six seven times now i think you get looked after well spoiled me <laughs> they look after me so well mukhtar zain these brothers just all the time all the time they they look after me they spend time with me um you know they're family to me they are no less than family they are my family in south africa they are so good to me so nice to me so so genuine with me in every way shape and form and I, and I love love going there I love speaking to the people they show so much love so much respect uh, and the same with Canada so many times I've been to Canada so many times I've spent in Canada uh, you know the brothers out there Umar Amir uh, the Sufi Council of Toronto and others in Calgary and Alberta and other places and I'm actually going to Canada in Ramadan as well I'll probably go for about three four days I think I'm busy, just waiting on busy that. schedule in Ramadan. Very busy schedule in Ramadan. Very busy schedule in Ramadan. But let's see, let's see what happens. Mm, uh, looking forward to it. Canada is not the first time I've been. Uh, I've been before many times and uh, inshallah many more to come. Many, many more to come. Inshallah. inshallah. And uh, what about you, man? Where you been? I was with you in Dubai. Well, oh. we've seen you in Dubai. Yes, we was in Dubai. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We went. I went to Umrah actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with you. my very, 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 very close friend, uh, big brother, uh, family. We went. We went to uh, Umrah for. I think it was uh, ten October. days. October. Less th- no, less than ten days. About eight, nine days. October. In October, and then obviously we, from there, went to uh, Dubai. Stayed a few nights in Dubai with him. Uh, he's got it fully patterned out there and uh, you boys were out there as well <laughs> yeah, mate. yeah 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 oh, Faki, Timmy, Pat, big shout out to my boy Pat I'll give a shout out to Furum and Ali from oh there. yeah Furum and Ali, the boys from Nelson <laughs> yeah the boys from Nelson as well and and we went out to eat and spent you know some good quality time together met Amir Khan out there yeah had some you boys with his team so we had to pattern that should up for you yeah you should have asked for something else remember the night before we rang you and said sorry how I'm and what? then uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. you said, right, come buy his food. Bo- buy his food's ready and he's waiting for you. Yeah. And you just lot were there. And Faki did a full an interview with him. <laughs> oh, no. We should have done a podcast there, mate. <laughs> Faki and him. He goes, I'm going to take you on a night out. <laughs> because he'll be perfect. <laughs> Faki, married man, on the dean. He's, he's none of that, man. He's, uh, but no, great laugh, great time. I think it's always sick when you see friends in another country. You do. I mean, bumped it. Oh, also, Nazi was there. You Nazi bumped was into there. Nazi, you just bumped Nazi into, Chowdhury, yeah, 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 Nazi was there. So a lot of people, you know, I, mean, I bumped into loads. I, I'll tell you a funny story. We went to, to do a bit of shopping and and we was in a shop and I was stood there with uh, with B and 
and when we were stood there, he um, he was just shopping, and there was two brothers, and and they were from India, and he's come over to me, and uh, he goes, uh, you know, you don't mind me asking, you that Imam on YouTube? I says, uh, yeah, yeah, I do, I do videos on YouTube. He goes, you know, Imam Asim. I says, yeah, he goes, brother, kill him, kiss your hand. <laughs> I love your talks, you know, you're such a great guy, so on and so forth. And he gives so much love, so much love and respect, you know. It was immense and, and <laughs> I think B looked at him like, <laughs> wherever you go, <laughs> why is it always people are trying to stop you and whatnot? But I think, Alhamdulillah, man. I think everyone who's in your inner circle, we've all experienced, man, we did you, mashallah, you know. And yeah. you do, it's not as if you knock people back and, you know. No, no. No, we're, we're always welcoming, man. We'll say we'll give time to people, and Wallahi, man, they show a lot of love and respect, man. Wallahi, they show so much love and respect. When nothing, this is what Allah gives to whom He wills, when He wills. I've seen some very tough times. I've seen very tough times. You obviously know that better than many. We've we've shared. I've, I've explained. I've we've sat, and I'm grateful to Allah. I'm grateful to Allah for every moment that we have, that we get to sit here to spend with our brothers, our families, our loved ones, you know. And and it's life's short. Life mm-hmm. is very short. It's not worth holding grudges. It's not worth hurt worth. And it's proven with like so many deaths the, around us, man. And the age nowadays, young, yeah, young, young, yeah. young. You know, Rahat's beloved wife was 31. Maj was 47. You know, Rob was 35, five, five, 36. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. After Zain was 22, my father was 49. Bro, think, uh, my dad was 49. Yeah, you know, there's no no guarantees, man. Tomorrow we don't know what it holds. And we just have to really be good to one another, be right with one another, not wrong anyone, not speak ill of anyone, you know, and better ourselves to become better people. And if we do that, then I think we'll be we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Um, so yeah, I've, uh, you know, a lot's happened. Went to a lot of places. Alhamdulillah, I get to travel a lot. You do. I don't show it much, mm. but we do. We do get to travel a lot on that. You do. Um, Faith cave as well. Oh yeah, that's that, big news. Yeah, I think you should uh, break that news. Yeah, yeah, Faith cave. So the last three years, we've set up the Faith cave, which is a uh, a grassroots youth initiative, a youth centre stroke community centre for our local public, put a lot of money into it, a lot of time into it. Great setup, I think. With everything, there's pitfalls, hardships, difficulties, we've seen that with the Faith Cave, no less. Um, but Alhamdulillah, a huge opening come through and uh, soon we will be opening up uh, another site. We'll be moving sites. Uh, I won't mention too much just yet, but we will be situated and located at a new site and uh, it'll be very, very close to home. And it's going to be something which I think will be phenomenal in this local area. Yeah, I think off when we talk as well about what it can potentially be and if we u- to utilize it in the correct way for the, yeah. especially the community and the kids, kids, the youth, the youth. Yeah. So much fitting out there. Mm. So, so you've got a daughter that's going to grow up in yeah, this society. Yeah. I've got a son that's going to grow up in this community and society. Yeah. We've got to create safe spaces for them. Yeah where they will not lose themselves, they'll not lose the Iman, they, they're safeguarded and protected. And uh, I think Faith Cave is one of those initiatives which, you know, Alhamdulillah, so many people look at and think we could do with that in our community, in our local communities and cities where we are. And we've seen it when people have come and we've been there and people from, your friends from other cities and have come and seen and they go, yeah. you've got nothing like this. Nothing. Pool tables, table tennis, uh, open classes, space. open space to play indoor football, to do events, to, to hire out at good pricing, uh, you know, a lot of stuff, a lot of benefits, yeah. so many benefits. And, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll be doing so much, hopefully, from this new site for the local community. You know, our, our local football clubs, they'll have access to it at good pricing for them to come in a safe environment, yeah. no drugs, no, no, no bad, just cracking on with it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, inshallah, hopefully, you know, in the coming podcast, we'll, we'll be able to share more news with yeah. regards to that. Yeah. With regards to that, inshallah. Inshallah. And uh, what else is happening? Ramadan coming up. 
Oh yeah. Close now. Not far. Not far at all. You know, I think less than forty five days. Less than forty five yes. days. Literally around the corner. On the doorstep. Rajab Shahrullah, Shaabanu Shahri, wa Ramadanu Shahru Ummati. Rajab is Allah's month, Shaaban is my month, and Ramadan is the month of my Ummah. And we're going through the month of Allah now, then we'll go through the month of the Prophet in which Allah Almighty revealed the verse, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi, ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik sallim. This, this verse was revealed in the month of Sha'ban. So the ulama said this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said Sha'ban is my month. And Ramadan is the month of my ummah. Ramadan comes and my servant can't get forgiven. You know, may his face be rubbed in dust. May he be destroyed. You can't, you can't not, not get forgiven in Ramadan. Ramadan's the month to get forgiveness. You know, Allah's blessings <clears throat> are so much in this month than any other month. The month of the Quran, the month of Taraweeh, the month of fasting, the month of prayer, the month of goodness, the month of charity. This is the month, this is the month and we should be prepping for that month now. Now, you know, it's not too late to prep now and we should get into good habits now so that when Ramadan comes, we can get maximum reward and benefits from it. So Ramadan's around the corner. Ramadan's around the corner. But it always happens though. It seems as though that or even though it's Ramadan, you always have something that's going a negative, like with someone getting stabbed or... <coughs> yeah, yeah, pre-Ramadan. Last few Ramadans we've seen yeah, things. Yeah. It's, even in Ramadan sometimes and you just, you know... Yeah. Sort of, you know, psychological downers, mental downers for us. Yeah. Or whether it's our community or personally or whatever. Mm. But these are tests from Allah. These are tests from Allah and tests come in these months more yeah. than any other and, and we should be patient and we should ask Allah for his ajr and reward and, and we should try our utmost to, um, to, to earn his pleasure as much as we can. Earn yeah. his pleasure as much as we can. Definitely. Is uh, doing itikaf here, you usually do it? Uh, yeah, yeah we, we, we have spaces for itikaf. It will be um, a much more controlled and reduced number of people uh, this year itikaf. Uh, but again, the youngsters are welcome uh, over the age of 18. And, uh, you know, inshallah should be good. And the vibes here in al in Ramadan are nice. Sehri time, Ronak. Sehri time, iftari time. Iftari time as well. Mashallah, we've got this, you know, newly renovated back community hall where people can, will be opening our fasts, inshallah. And it's going to be beautiful. beautiful a, lot of, a lot of people from the community if do if study yeah 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 as well. Tariq manages that yeah and uh, people who do want to host if studies here can do so need to just get in touch reach out to us and they can contribute financially or with the food and open the fasts of our local uh, congregants who come to pray and to open their fasts here so alhamdulillah lots happening lots to happen and um, looking forward to it look very 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 much looking forward to uh, so much to look forward to. We've got playoffs to look forward to. We've inshallah. Got, inshallah. New uh, premises. Finals, a potential new premises uh, in all aspects to look forward to. New projects, uh, trips to Palestine, going to Umrah in April. Inshallah. Uh, got a few spaces left for that. If anyone wants to join me on a trip to Umrah, 26th, 16th of April till the 26th of April. Um, so, so lots happening, man. What's happening? Busy next few months then. Always busy. Always. If uh, if we remain uh, idle uh, and procrastinate, then we're, we're not doing so much. Something's wrong. We have to always keep ourselves busy as Muslims. Yeah. A believer is always busy, occupied in, uh, hopefully not in the dunya, but in the deen and in the welfare and the betterment of the ummah. That's the key. And if we can do that, then fantastic. And I think all this stuff that we've spoken about uh, is related to that. No, no, related to that. And inshallah, hopefully we'll be having uh, special guests on our podcasts who we can interrogate, we can talk to, we can chill with, speak about their journeys, whether it's sports people, whether it's business people, whether it's influencers, 
uh, whoever it may be, uh, you know, it's very important to, to engage with our local communities with regards to this. So guys, please share the podcast, share the link. Uh, let everyone know around you that there's a, a podcast ev- uh, every second Monday of the month, every fortnightly, uh, 8 p.m. live with me and uh, Sasu. Unless we've got a Ruben game. Yeah. No, I might still go ahead with it. <laughs> I'll let Sami deal with that. Uh, but Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, uh, it's, it's going to be good. Somebody uh, has said, can uh, we ask Hassan why he's been Dubai 26 times? It says Zak Khan, by the way, but... Oh, right. <laughs> I take everything that I said about Zak back now. No, no, no. <laughs> we have a lot of banter and a lot of laughs amongst our own friends and, and social circles, Alhamdulillah. And uh, it's a good vibe. We have a good yeah. laugh. You know what I was thinking the other day, you know, when we were younger and we were coming, we were 15, 16. Yeah. And we had elders like Pena, Ima, Big Zai. <laughs> we there, Jimmy, and we used to be with them. Now I see that, that, yeah. that was the day when they were telling me I'm 22 years old. You just think. Where's time gone, man? <laughs> so, so I'm 34 next week. 14th of February is my birthday. I am 34 years old. Mashallah. And we was in the same playground at the age of 12. Yeah, look at I that. was 12, you was 11. Yeah. I think you were one, you were one, one year younger, younger yeah. One so, younger. you know, I was year, years eight, you was year seven. Yeah. And five years we did. Yeah. You know, a lot of football we played, a lot of time we spent. And look at time where it's gone, man. We've grown from that time to now. Yeah. You know, married, kids. Madness. Is oh, wallahi, madness. Time goes quick. Time goes very, very quick, you know, and we must make as much of this time. We must not waste time. We must spend time in the worship of Allah, in the obedience of Allah, in earning closeness and the pleasure of Allah Almighty at all times. That's what we need to do. The more we do that, the better our lives will become. Honestly, you know, the podcast, you know, the objective is that people draw closer to the deen. And, uh, you know, we've got to try our utmost as much as we can and uh, earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything we do. And if our intentions are right, then we will. Definitely. It comes down to intentions. 100%. Everything comes down to intentions. What are your intentions? In In actions are found upon intention. And whatever you intend, And for every person is what he intends. If he intends good, then he'll get good. If he intends bad, then he'll see bad. So we must have good intentions in whatever we do. And if we do, then Allah will reward you according to your intention and sincerity. Yeah. And I think on that we will wrap it up. We will call it a night. And inshallah, we'll be back on, next, not next Monday, the Monday after. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe to Aima TV. Uh, inshallah, under the playlist podcast section, let's talk with Aima. You'll find all the new podcasts coming up on there. Please share. Inshallah, there'll be many clips that will be going up on TikTok, you can follow me on TikTok with Imam Asim Hussain and also on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Inshallah, I'll see you again. Sasu, we'll talk about many more things. Allah reward you, bless you, bless your families, all those who have tuned in. Allah give you all khair, barakah and afiyah. And we make special, special, special dua for all those who have passed away in our circles, families, loved ones, and especially, especially the people of Palestine, people of Gaza, Allah grant the shuhada high maqam in paradise and forgive uh, each and every one of us. Allah bless Yemen, Allah bless Sudan, Allah bless all those Muslim countries that are going through hardship and difficulties with goodness, with khair and unity within the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 